Our next presenter is Olivia Ortiz. <laughs> Activist. Activist, educator, and CEO Olivia Ortiz has dedicated herself to the development and enrichment of her community. Olivia serves as CEO of Burnt Nopal, which offers a range of services around branding, design, experiences, and she began with her husband, contemporary artist Cruz Ortiz. As part of her community work, Olivia serves Eva's Heroes, Eva's Heroes, Sa South San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, Bear County Child Welfare Commission, San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So. Everyone, please put your hands together for Olivia Ortiz. Thank you so much. All right, well, that was a tough act to follow. She's um, fangirling a little bit, so <laughs> please stay with me. Um, good evening. Thank you to the Pacha Kucha team, fellow presenters, and audience. It is an honor to be here with you. You know, a week ago from today, I was at another event and a major city leader, hashtag boss babe, shared she had had a child with special needs. I'm paraphrasing, but she told me, people think that we have it all, that we're so strong, and some will say bitchy. But what they don't realize is our children, these children, have defined us. And that hit me. I think I always knew it, but she put it in a way that spoke to me a little bit differently. That was a more refined perspective than I could ever have come up with. And I'm grateful that she shared that with me. My inner strength lay dormant until the birth of my oldest child, Graciela, now 11. I had a very normal pregnancy with the exception of daily hiccups. I ate organic food, avoided caffeine, and for the first time in my life was conscientious about what I was putting into my body. My efforts have since seemed to be in vain. This child wasn't even an hour old and I was completely in love. The moment I became a mother was the first time I felt like I had real purpose in my life. I was 24 years old with a teaching career and this was the first time I felt purpose and the first time I had an appreciation for life. <laughs> After delivery, Graciela seemed fine. They put her on my chest and she was perfect. She went to the nursery to be cleaned up this is when I learned from my delivery nurse that Graciela had stopped breathing and had to be resuscitated. I immediately stood up and took a few steps before being placed in a wheelchair. I had an epidural and should not have been able to stand. Graciela was released from NICU after two weeks. We were sent home with an anti-seizure med and were hopeful. Like all new parents, stress was high, but when you're a new parent with a medically fragile child, it's downright terrifying. I'm forever learning how to better care for Graciela. She developed typically about, until about six months of age. She rolled over, she cooed, she was a good eater, and she was sleeping through the night. While I was teaching, my grandmother, Grandma Elda, took care of her during the day. You see, some people are fearful of taking care of Graciela, not Grandma. She just loved her and talked about that baby any chance she got. My concern started when she failed to learn how to crawl. That's not to say she wasn't motivated to move. She quickly learned to scoot in a V. You know, where you sit with your legs apart and pull yourself around. It was the cutest thing. And as cute as it was, as a teacher, I knew from early childhood development education, something wasn't right. At 15 months, she had mastered a few words, like mama, papa for food, awa, bye bye and go, but not much else. Her fine motor wasn't advancing. She could not feed herself with utensils. Hand to mouth was her preferred method, and yet nobody really believed me that there was something deeper than seizures afflicting this child. It wasn't till, until a pediatrician friend of mine said, Olivia, I want to talk to you about what I've noticed about Gracialita. My heart stopped as she spoke. I could hear her words, but it was like I was watching this whole interaction in unreal time. She didn't have a clear answer of what was wrong with Graciela, but this was a pivotal moment. I'm so thankful to her, not only because she saw what I saw, but because she empowered me to hunt down answers. She thought maybe it was autism, but Graciela's eye contact was too strong. 
She was nonverbal and lacked fine and gross motor skills, all things that can be diagnosed as such. But my mother's intuition said it wasn't. The evening my friend shared her concerns about Graciela, I couldn't sleep and researched the entire night what could be wrong with her and what the next step should be. I found a school that had one-to-one -one ABA or applied be behavioral analysis therapy instruction. The next day I was sitting in the school founder's office enrolling Graciela. It didn't matter that we didn't have a diagnosis yet. It didn't matter that tuition was more than most colleges. This child needed one-on-one -on -one care. I'm a huge advocate for early intervention and believe we would not have accomplished as many milestones as we were able to without one-on-one -on -one and without a dedicated team of specialists and therapists. I will forever be thankful to her therapist, Mallory, who motivated her with Miss Brittany Spears to stand for three seconds, then 10 seconds, and finally to take her first steps at three. Graciela also learned some new words like up and papa for potty. She learned signs to communicate further. She was then and is now the hardest working person in our family. We managed from 15 months to eight years old with a global developmental delay diagnosis. Those seven years, I pushed Graciela to her fullest potential. I mentioned she was enrolled in ABA, but she also went to physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy, all the while still tr trying to provide normal childhood experiences. In May of 2016, after years of insurance denials, we finally received Graciela's official Rett syndrome diagnosis through genetic testing. The diagnosis was bittersweet. There were countless times I asked the medical team, is it Rett? As she regresses, I see how Graciela was able to fool professionals. Rett is a neurological genetic disorder that is not inherited. Affecting primarily girls, it is debilitating and regressive. Graciela has since lost the ability to walk and rarely uses verbal communication. She suffers from seizures and tremors similar to Parkinson's. She struggles to control her body but is completely cognitively aware. She is completely in our world. She is sarcastic, rolls her eyes, and laughs at her mother's inappropriate jokes. She communicates on a Toby Dynavox. I get letters like these from her, scribed by her wonderful nanny. Once I asked, how are you feeling today? Ugly. Surprised, I asked why, and she went to her number keypad and hit the number twice. I had to repeat it in my head, two, two. Two, two, she was wearing this superhero tool dress. That's when she said, no more baby clothes. Oops. And let me take a, a moment to brag as a mom. We never taught her to read. We found out she could spell phonetically when she started using her talker. With her talker, we've been given a little window into her world. I heard I love you for the first time two years ago. Graciela no longer breathes normally. I've seen her hold her breath until her lips turn blue. I've seen her hyperventilate, resulting in panic attacks. This is frightening. Every morning I lie in bed and hold my breath until I hear her on the baby monitor. Every morning is a win for us. I used to shield her in our story, Mama Bear style. But a right cure and access is so close through biomedical engineering. That's right, I said cure, for a syndrome with an average lifespan of early 20s. With continued progress and sufficient funding, Rett syndrome could become the first neurological disorder that can be profoundly reversed. It is time to create Rett syndrome awareness in our own community. We need you to not only donate, we need you to share awareness, and most importantly, we need you to vote. Vote like it's your own child. Vote for better health care. Vote for the legalization of THC. Vote for humanity. The mural that was just shown was um, a mural that Dada created titled Lightning Girl Finds Her Way Home. Lightning Girl is one of his many nicknames for our Graciela. So thank you all so much. Are you sure? Thank you so much for sharing such a you know personal story. I think you know you're you're right in saying that 
I think a lot of times people who have personal stories like this kind of don't want to tell them, but I think that it's such an important reason for sharing that is that other people can learn more. They can, you know, they can band together to help. So Absolutely. I know, um, you know, you and your family are going to be relocating to Houston soon, yes. a city that I love very much, and I know that'll provide a treatment center for your daughter and opportunities for you and your husband, Cruz. Um, so how do you plan to kind of stay connected to our community after you move to Houston? Well, good news, Burnt Nepal is just expanding, so we'll, ha we'll be here and there. We have a business development officer in San Antonio, so um, I'll be back and forth for that. I will also continue um, my board commitments, such as Hispanic Chamber, as I'll still have a business here. Um, Eva's Heroes turns out in June, so, and then what else? Oh, Planned Parenthood. Wonderful. South Texas. So That's wonderful. I'll still be here. Back and yeah, forth. Back yes. and forth. Yeah. Stay connected to the community. Um, so I have a question, um, you know, because I, like you and Cruz, I have a husband, you know, partnership, you know, a collaborative partnership that we've had for over a decade as well. Ain't it And fun? it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really wonderful. And I, you know, I'm kind of interested in the idea of, you know, partnerships that have lasted that long. How do you kind of, how have you utilized that partnership to kind of find your own personal growth in a way? So Cruz and I actually talk about this a lot. We didn't grow into who we were as people or into our career until we came together. And just him supporting me so much and me supporting him, I think both of us never really had that at that level. So we grew together, but also individually, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. I think I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think, you know, it's really wonderful that, you know, you've shared this personal story with us tonight. And, Thank you know, you. I think it's great to have that kind of insight because I think it's easy to see artists, you know, you see their work. And so it's really wonderful to see the lives behind the artists whose work we admire. So thank oh, you so much. Thank you. Everybody, I'll give it for Olivia Ortiz.